Welcome to Laurie's Little Studio. I'm Laurie and today I am finishing an alteration on a pair of embroidered corduroy bell bottoms. This uh, bell is too big and what I'm doing is reducing it. It's a, it's a long process but it can be done. The first thing of course is to have the person who will be wearing these try them on and then you kind of assess how big the bell is and at what point on the leg you want to start the taper. So in this case it is about 13 inches from the hem. So, and I've done this one. Uh, it's just basted however and I'll explain that in just a minute. But Let's see if I can find my mark. Okay, so here is that mark, and I believe if we look, it's 13 inches from the lower. Sorry, I'm trying to. <laughs> there we go. So 13 inches. All right, so here is the bottom of the hem, and this is my mark right here. And this is 13 on this ruler and there it is almost exactly 13 inches and I just use that as a gauge in case I have to turn these back the other way and I don't have a mark and I will have to turn them back the other way because I have to undo this seam right here the reason that I have to undo this seam, and I cannot undo this seam, which is invisible, is because of the embroidery. It would distort the embroidery and it would be impossible to stitch it back because these pants were, it's an interesting thing, these pants were made from white baby well corduroy. They were put together and then they were dyed all of the different colors that this that this particular brand chose to offer and there were several colors and then after they did that they applied the embroidery so that's a, kind of an interesting um, way of of doing things I think but you will you will not be able to taper from both sides on a pair of pants that are put together with embroidery on one side. Just be aware that that's the problem. There is a seam here, but, and you can see it, but this embroidery was done on top of the seam and you just, you would truly ruin this look right here this little vista if you cut into the jeans on this side or the pants on this side. So they're also too long and of course they've been washed one time in warm water and dried to get that um, full amount of shrinkage and then after this, the, after that particular washing they will then forever be washed in cold water and probably not put in the dryer again but um, I have to taper this just a little bit more right here. But this has just been basted. And the reason I do that is so that they can be tried on without fear of, you know, pins. And they're, they're more accurate. So after I did this, we decided that I would taper the stitching a little bit more to ease out this bubble right here. But I'm going to go ahead and start pulling the stitches on this side right here, which means I'll have to turn this pant leg to right side out. Excuse me, to wrong side out. Okay, and so this is the seam right here that I will be removing, and I know that it's going to be a 13 inch amount you want to make sure that you're working with a flat you know there's no wrinkles it's not folded up on itself and 
I'm going to mark it. And this will be kind of an approximate measurement. But you do have to you do have to have the measurement marked because you need to know on both sides. Both legs have to be the same. In my case, both legs have to be the same amount taken in. Okay, and then once you've done that, of course you have them try this on and then you'll you'll measure uh, how much of this bell they want removed. And we can see on this one, if I just look on the inside, I have this amount on one side and this amount on the other side. And this will be trimmed down and then I will also be zigzagging. I'm not gonna pull my uh, serger out to do 13 inches on both legs. It's just, I'm not gonna do it. For me, I mean, I don't have enough space to keep them, keep both my serger and my sewing machine on the tabletop where I'm working. If you do, obviously it would be easier to do a serged seam there. Okay, so I have this marked and it's time to just employ your seam ripper and work these stitches out just carefully. I know that there is this idea that you could just cut it since you're going to be um, removing all that fabric anyway. Uh, but I don't know that I would be able to, if I cut this off, I would want to be able to get an exact measurement on how much of a hem I'm taking in. So um, that's why I don't bother and I don't cut. I think it's a little bit risky doing it that way. It's a little difficult to do projects when you have had six inches of snow fall. I mean, you know, it's winter, we're gonna have snow. It's just part of what happens, but everybody is home and there's like this heightened level of excitement and what are we gonna do and are the roads passable? And while everything kind of screeches to a halt, everybody seems to have 115 things to do. So a whole lot of things kind of get in the way, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And what you want to do and what you need to do might end up being in conflict with each other. Okay, so where I am at this point is I have pulled all the stitching up to that 13 inch mark. And I just put one of these little office clips right here where that line is that's the 13 inch line and I'm checking I want to kind of make sure I have the thread cleared out it might seem redundant since I will be removing most of what we're looking at right here however if you take care and do sort of what you might think is a superfluous unnecessary thing, you will actually have really good results. And the reason that I say that is because if I'm stitching along, 
and I'm just going to give this as an example because it happens to be there. But let's just say that I've been stitching and I'm stitching and I'm stitching and this piece of thread gets caught in my stitch line, I then will have a little bit more difficulty removing it than if I do it now. So that is why I'm taking the time and the effort to remove the thread. Woo. All right, this is the first time I've had one of these good gravy Scotch Bright. Well, it's about to defeat me, I gotta tell you. Oh, I'm like, I can't be this weak. Um, oh, sorry about that. Um, most of these that I get come from the dollar store. And this, my husband bought like a big bunch of them from Amazon. I've never used one that was so that this was so hard to remove that's that's this is a first for me it may be very common for a lot of people but i mean my goodness that's some amazing lint picky uppy stuff right there <laughs> lint picky uppy stuff okay it's for me it's one of the best ways uh, even with the dollar store brand to, to pick up excess threads and just get them out of your way. I mean, I didn't have to pick all that up myself. It just, you know, there it is. And I'm not going to remove this because it's still sticky. I'm just going to put this back on it. And the next time I need to do anything, I still have enough sticking power that I can use this without throwing this in the garbage. The ones that I've already used. You know what I'm trying to say. There's a couple threads that have to be cut. All right, so the next step for this one will be to mark it where I need to cut down and I'll just be doing a basting stitch. Why am I doing a basting stitch? Well, the reason that I'm doing a basting stitch is I want to be able to handle this without getting stabbed. I want to, especially if you have the person that you're doing this for, or even yourself, if you're doing it for yourself. Um, and by the way, FYI, if you are doing this for yourself, if you have a pair of pants that you're trying to reduce the bell, I find that if you sit on the floor and put your legs straight out, if you are physically able to put your legs straight out in front of you as you're sitting on the floor and then just lean forward and you can kind of determine if this is your leg you can kind of determine you know how much you need to remove if you don't have embroidery on one side or if there's an all over print i suggest that you take half of that width from the inside leg seam and half of that width from the outside leg seam. If the outside leg seam or the inside leg seam is a flat felled seam, and I'll post a picture of what that looks like right here, they may be, those seams are harder to unpick. So if you've got, and most of the time on a pair of blue jeans, they're on the inside. So if you have a flat filled seam on the inside, you're most likely going to be removing your excess fabric from the outside seam, which if this is a felled seam, this is not likely going to be a felled seam. Usually on a pair of jeans, you don't have a flat fell seam on the outside and a flat fell seam on the inside. I'm not going to say it doesn't happen. It could be a design element. I don't know. I'm not... A you know a designer that goes around looking at you know seven hundred and fifteen dollar pairs of blue jeans, but most of the jeans that I've seen, the inside seam is felled and the outside seam is just a regular seam. 
it could look felled. It might have a regular seam that then has been stitched next to, like the stitching has another row of stitching just running along the seam on the outside. That's not a flat fell seam, that's just extra thread. So that's a little bit easier to deal with. But again, getting back to what I was saying, if you're sitting on the floor, pretend like this is your leg, you can just kind of see where you need to remove the excess fabric for yourself. But the reason that I do go ahead and do this basting, even though I hate wasting that thread, I don't consider it a waste in this case because I want to make sure that I'm able to blend in, and I'll start back here on this, just kind of gently flare this to the inside, the amount that I need it to be, you know, taken up. This is the fabric that'll be removed, and I want to kind of do a slow slide out to that. If you start abruptly, if you just start stitching, whoop, like right here to here, and that angle is that sharp, you're going to have a big gap of, of uh, seam when the fabric is turned to the outside. And I can show you what I mean on this leg. Even though I did do a bit of a gradual, I didn't do enough of a gradual. And instead of switching that out yesterday, I decided to leave it so I could show you guys what I'm talking about. So even though I'm working on this leg right here, I'm gonna go ahead and finish this one so that you can see what I'm talking about. So we're gonna pull this wrong side out or turn it inside out is what a lot of people say. I have pins in the hem so I need to be mindful and not hurt myself. Okay, so right here is where I need to get this flip to the inside. Right here is where I did that huge, I mean, it's just a straight off angle right here. Let me pull you down so you can see what I mean. And I actually should start up here and graduate to this. And that just eases in that extra bit of fabric right there. So my plan, which I can mark with a heat erase pen is, I need to get this where it's working. A lot of my friction pens have lost their ink. This one is one of those in particular. All right, make sure of course, when you're doing all of your marking and your sewing, that your fabric is flat. You don't want any kind of a wrinkle or a bubble or anything up underneath because it's going to show up when you turn your fabric right side out. Here we go. There. So... That needs to just be that gradual slide. And it's not doing, it's not changing anything up here at all. It's just a little bit of a, a gradual. Yeah, right here. Perfect. Okay, so when I stitch this and we turn it to the proper side, you'll be able to see that that weird little bubble will have disappeared. I also have to hem because even though when you take some of the width out of bell pants, bell bottom pants, even though you remove it, they do tend to appear a little bit shorter these did not. So this one needs to be hemmed up by this much. And I just had her try them on and I marked it. And this is the finished 
hem right here. This is where she wants it to be finished. So I will have to go in, mark this, and then turn this under. This whole entire hem has to be removed. And then I can just make a nice, neat, you know, double turned hem just like this. Oh, and I wanted to show you guys. You see what I'm talking about? How they start out with this light colored corduroy. And no, this is not salvage edge. It couldn't possibly be um, because it's at an angle. But anyway, so then they dip dye, I guess. I mean, that's pretty interesting. And they had some beautiful colors. So it's a good way to get those, um, those interesting shades. But it does show up in some of the areas that might not have been, you know, as with the dye as concentrated. But I think it's an interesting phenomenon. I like looking at it. Alrighty, so let me get some things sorted out over here and we'll get to this. All right, so now all I have to do is turn my sewing machine on. And I have loaded my machine with thread that is similar to the same shade. I am not going to go purchase a whole spool of thread that will match one pair of pants. I am using a gray Guterman and it is fine. It's blending just fine. Oh, and to match the thread, I recommend flipping it to the out the inside and checking, you know, whatever heavy layer of thread you have. This is my thread. This is the thread that came with this project and while this is definitely a green, this gray is absolutely blending just fine. All right, so we are going to start back up here, right there, and just work our way in kind of a slow little slide toward the line that I did last night. And I'm also going to baste it so I've got it in a straight stitch, needle down. I'm gonna go all the way up to five stitches. Now the other thing I actually do, I've got a little ahead of myself. Take a piece of fabric out of your cabbage patch. So I always try to keep this near my sewing machine and I'll try to find something. Yeah, you should be able to see on this. I want to check to see what they look like. I want to make sure everything looks good. Okay, let's see if I can get that to go even. Okay, that's about where it's going to be. So I have checked my stitches right here. That is five. Oh gosh. Let me pull my light, my little light over. Maybe that'll help. That is five plus 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 plus. Now, if I were to back it back down to just the default normal number of stitches, you might be able to see the difference. But this is just a good old basting stitch, and it's very easy to remove, just like that. And that's what I'm looking for. I want to put my needle right on the original line of stitching and then I'm just going to angle my project a little. Okay, and I've met up with the original stitching that I made and I'm now going to turn this back to the other side because I want to see if what I did helped blend in that fabric. 
without leaving a bubble. And it did. It's perfect. This is still kind of bunchy because I've got this big wad at the bottom where I'm going to be hemming it. But just look at that. It's perfect. And of course, I'm going to put this on a sleeve board and press. But there's that seam. It's nice. I've got a lot of fabric in here that I'm trying to flatten on the inside. But there we go. All nice and perfect. So I'm going to go ahead now, and this needs to go back the other way, and I'll tell you why in just a second. Okay. I need to know how much fabric I'm removing. Oh, my hands are sticking to each other. Okay, there we go. All right. Okay, so I need to measure this. I need to measure where I started, and I'm, I need to make sure that they're both going to be the same. And the best way to do it is to fold the pair of pants so that the back waistband is folded in half. And the seam that you're not stitching is matched up on one side. And the seam that you are stitching is matched up on the other side. Like so. Now this one is going to be a little bit shorter because I'm going to be hemming it. Put that light out of the way. Alright, so I need to make sure that this seam and this seam are in the same place. All right, so here are my dashed lines where my hem needs to finish. I wrote down one and five eighths on this side, so I know that is where I need that to go. I'm gonna flip this up and do the same on this side. Do it this way. I'm going to make sure that's kind of in the same. Yep. All right. And do take a minute to, you know, to remark your hem. Um, try to find a way to make that work. Whether you use chalk or pencil or heat erase pen just makes such a difference, especially when you're sewing something like a hem like this. It's round and you have to go over the arm of your sewing machine. You just kind of need it to be okay. Now remember, this is just basted. So I have to do this, you know, back in a regular stitch. I can't just leave it basted like that. Now I'm going to match up the hems of these two legs. Make sure everything is straight exactly the way it's supposed to be. Nice and flat and straight and perfect. Get everything evened out and to keep this straight and flat I think I'm going to go ahead and use my clips because this hem wants to lay flat open and I need it to lay flat closed like that. And it won't matter if I'm putting my clips right side up or upside down because I'm not going to be sewing with these clips. This is just for me. Alright, so now I am going to measure this. Okay. One, two, three, four. Okay. All right, so one, three, 
fourths. But the other option here is I can line these up. Yep, that works too. And then I can measure against what I'm doing to see. Is this one not? Ugh. I need to get rid of the one that's not working. And put the one that is working somewhere where I'll keep grabbing it instead of the one that's not working. My goodness. Ah, yeah, this is the working one. You, my friend, must go sit over here out of my reach. All right. Now, the way I marked them, of course, was with chalk when she was wearing these for my, you know, my measurements. And what happens, of course, is the chalk just wears off. So no matter what you do, with all the work, especially on corduroy, you're going to have that chalk just disappear. Which, that's fine. You just have to be aware that it's going to go away. Perfect. That lined up just perfectly. Okay, now I'm going to take my ruler. Yeah. And that'll tell me where I need to. All right, and it won't rub off. And that is the main thing. I need this line to stay here, and it will. So next, let's see, I need my scissors. I'm, I'm not going to pull out the basting stitches unless they show on the outside. This will be sort of a, a little extra bit of I don't know, strength for this pair of pants. They don't have to, these basting stitches don't have to come out. All right, I'm going to go ahead and stitch this with the basting stitch and do it this way this time. And then I can take out the hem so that I can hem the pants. All right, here we go. All right, so now I can take out my these clips right here and I'm going to compare the two. I want to make sure that what I have stitched on this leg is the same as what I just stitched on the other leg. They need to be the same and if my measurements are correct they are the same. Okay, that looks pretty good, but I need to turn the one that I just stitched right side out so that I can check to see how this looks right along this seam here. If my stitching blends with the original stitching, so to speak. Was this the one that I did yesterday? Yes, this is the one that I did yesterday. All right. Now one thing that we need to do is press and of course we also have to trim down all that extra fabric on the inside what in the world is happening oh <laughs> that was kind of weird I thought what did I do okay yeah get that I may need to work on this just a bit right here and we need to press and then trim down that little bit of extra fabric on the inside and then zigzag over the edge of the fabric. So if this is our fabric that we've just cut off and this is the pants, we're going to stitch off of this 
and zig on to this and then off and then on so that we're going right over the raw edge. Unless you have a serger and you already know how to use it, in which case you can just serge these off and that will create your surged edge. You don't, you know how to do a serger. I don't need to explain that. Okay, this needs to be kind of finessed a little bit. I've got to go around and take all of the hem edge out, mark both hems for the proper length, uh, do a little bit of pressing, and then when I come back, I'm gonna show you how I'll finish the inside and do the hem. So I thought while I'm, I've got this hem completely picked out and I'm gonna work on this one and I thought while I work on this for a few minutes, I would discuss the proper way to iron corduroy. Can you iron corduroy? Yes. Yes, you can. Can you wash corduroy? Yes, you can. Now I recommend when you have corduroy uh, made into something that's very structured like these bell-bottom pants or a shirt or a jacket or even a vest um, that you put it in either a washing bag which would be a mesh bag with a zipper or a, you can put it in a um, pillowcase and then just do like a ponytail holder an elastic to close that off. The main reason for that is you kind of want it contained in the machine and you don't want other things, you know, in the washing machine rubbing up against your corduroy. So if you want to wash it in cold, uh, that's absolutely fine. If you have a specific area of the corduroy that you need to press like I'm going to. I'm going to need to press out this hem right here and I'm going to need to um, press the inside leg seams where I made these adjustments. You do your pressing from the wrong side of the corduroy piece and you don't put the iron directly on the fabric unless you're doing it from the back side and you're just doing a lift and touch method of pressing. The very best thing you can do uh, to get really deep wrinkles out of corduroy is to spritz it with water and allow it to dry a little bit and then if it's just not responding, go ahead and do a very light lift and press. And you can use a little steam, but if you put your iron down on the corduroy and you hit steam, you're going to have an imprint of the iron plate right on your corduroy. So I recommend just holding the iron above it and kind of pressing your steam button down and, and then just kind of put a press cloth on it Really, 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 it's not about high heat and it's not about a lot of pressure when you're working with corduroy. I don't recommend that you press it from the right side because this pile, you know, where the whales are in your corduroy will flatten. It will just flatten and you will have a very clear indication that something happened to it. If it's wrinkled and it's not dirty, put it on a coat hanger and hang it up in a steamy room, a bathroom, a laundry room, something, uh, and just let it hang. And if it's like a super big wrinkle, you know you're gonna wanna get that wrinkle out. Spritz it with some water and let it hang up in that, in that soft, steamy environment and it will definitely help. And you can kind of, as it's drying or the wrinkles are coming out, you can kind of, you know, give it a little tug in the direction of the whale. You don't want to go this way because you'll separate the whale, but just, you know, in the direction the whale is going, go ahead and pull it that way and 
let that be part of the process pulling the wrinkles out with the steam so that is what I would do let's see if that worked it does feel like it I do still see a little bit a little tiny bit of a bubble right here yeah, I need to make that just a bit tighter. And as I said, it is a process and I will be finessing just this tiny little bit of fabric into this seam. The rest of it is perfect. This is perfection and this is perfection. It's just this little spot right here that needs to be sort of eased in to the rest. So, We'll just keep working at it until we get it perfect. I mean, I don't think anybody wants to wear a pair of pants that's got kind of a weird bubble on the side of the leg. Okay, I see it's just a little wavy here. So actually, at this point, what I'm going to do is draw Are you a good pen? Yeah. Okay. Okay, I'm just gonna draw myself. I wanna see how close I am. I don't quite. There we go. Right there. Actually, I'm just going to use a pencil for clarity. It'll come out. these stitches out and redo this. About here. And I'm planning to take a couple of just stitches in the original stitch line right here. So I'm just gonna go stitch and then I'm gonna start my my push toward my stitch line. a lot straighter it, it's, it doesn't have that little bobble which all day I've been thinking you have to deal with that you have to deal with that all right so the next thing here that I'm going to do is carefully flatten out my pant leg and make sure that I have everything over here that needs to be over here and everything over here that needs to be over here. I don't want this situation or I'm going to be cutting. I know that's exaggerated, but it doesn't matter. It could still happen or any little bit of this fabric from this side get underneath here and I will have ruined this pair of pants. So I need to make extra careful sure and I'm happy with that. Okay, so there's that. 
and I'm happy. All right, we are going to drop our stitch. So the best way for me to do it is to turn my machine off, turn it back on, put my machine in the needle down position, and now I'm in the default stitch. And I'm going to check it. Okay, and that is what that is what the default stitch looks like. I'm trying to get it in the light where you can see it. It's quite small. It's a, a two. It's not two and a half or 2.5, it's two. I'll bring the light over. There we go. That might be a little bit more visible individual stitch wise. I think you can see it. I don't know, it's, it's hard to tell from here. It's getting dark outside and that's part of the issue that I'm having. All right, so I'm on two. I'm going to put it on two and a half or 2.5. Okay, and I'm going to start here. Keep everything flat and smooth. Because it is basted, I don't have to worry about pinning. And I'm not going to stitch over the hem. And I'm checking it to make sure that I have not overstitched onto something that I didn't want to stitch on and that I don't have bubbles, which it appears everything looks good. Okay, and I'm gonna do the other leg as well. So the next step is that you can individually zigzag over each one of these if you want to, but I am not going to do that. What I'm going to do is trim I'm gonna trim these down. Sorry about Bama, he's, the snow has just got him literally whipped into an absolute frenzy. But I'm going to trim these down just a little bit more. Um, I'm trying to decide about the hemming. I may wait on the inside leg finish and I may not, it's just, going to depend. This needs to be zigzagged individually. Okay. All right, so just this little bit right here, I will be zigzagging, but this is going to be the hem. Yeah, so there's some things I need to do before, and I think one of them is I need to take a break. Basically all I have to do 
to get this hem where I need to cut it is just cut along this line right here. So I made a template for the exact amount that I need to trim off the bottom and it is lining up with this right here. And the hem will be a half of an inch just like this right here. This little flap is a half of an inch and then I will fold it over another half of an inch but it will be a new hem. So I'm just gonna trim this off on both legs. I have pressed it. The way I pressed it is I spritzed it with a little bit of water and then I put my press cloth on top and I just touched my iron to this on this side, not on this side. I don't want to cause any issue or damage to the uh, right side of the corduroy. So this one is still just a wee bit wet from the from the spritz, but that's okay. I don't mind. So I guess the best thing to do is to just trim it right along this line, which happens to be very, very well marked on this side. So that's easy enough. I think I will cut just a couple threads on the new part that I stitched just to make it easier. And then I'm just gonna cut right along that line. I'm gonna use my scissors so that I can get a pretty accurate cut. I wanna make sure that I'm just cutting a single layer of fabric at a time. So I've got my hand behind it back here and I'm just gonna hold it like this and cut. Because it's soft and sort of matches, this is my husband's favorite shirt and the collar is shot. So aside from just removing this and leaving it down, you know, down to the Japanese style collar, I think what I'm going to do <clears throat> is stitch this right along here to hide the ripped up portion and it's soft enough that it won't scratch or be annoying I don't think but at this point that's all we got left how much of this do I have got perfect okay well, that's what I'm gonna do All right, so the inside leg seam has been pressed, and now all I have to do is zigzag. I need to trim this down just a little bit more to kind of more closely match what the original looks like, and then just zigzag right off the edge. So carefully, carefully, very carefully, just trim this down to about a quarter of an inch. So you know what? <laughs> I just remembered that George has a blanket stitch that closely replicates this serged stitch. So let's just take a piece of the leftovers and do a little bit of a blanket stitch on here and see if we prefer that. pretty good.
Okay, so this is what it looks like. I mean, it's not as pretty as a serged edge, but it's still nice and tidy. All right, I'll be back in a moment. Okay, I wanted to just, there's a couple things I wanna talk about before I go ahead and finish hemming this. I did do one, this one is finished. And one of the things that you have to remember, unless you want a lettuce edge on the bottom of your pant leg, is that you need to push from behind your presser foot when your fabric is releasing from the front as you're stitching along on a stretchy fabric like this. So the other issue that I had is I put my pins vertically on the other leg and I'm going to go with the horizontal approach on this one because I found it was a little bit more difficult because I had to keep pulling the pins out way before I got to that section and it wanted to slip out underneath. This wanted to slip out and I would have to go back and tuck it back in. So I'm going to try more pins, horizontally pin down. Um, it was most especially difficult where these two seams are. So I need to keep an eye on this. There's a little bubble right there. Um, and then we'll be pressing. And remember what I told you about pressing, not ironing, but pressing. Um, and to use a press cloth, anything will do. A piece of fabric that you're not using, um, a bath towel, a kitchen towel, um, any kind of fabric that you have. I don't recommend using a paper towel because it could burn. And I, I, don't, I haven't done it before, but I don't think it's a good idea. So I'm gonna go ahead with you, with me, while I do this so that you can watch what I'm talking about with the back part of this right here. So let's see. Can you see that? No, nope, I'm probably gonna have to readjust the camera. Okay, I think this will work. I believe you can see what I'm talking about right there. And I'm going to start on one of the two seams, just on this side. So this seam is right here, and I'm going to put this pant leg right there. And it's a big wad of fabric. So I'm gonna need to wiggle it. I need it to be, oh, there we go. Right on this edge that I can feel it with my finger, but that you would just have to be able to feel that with your finger. Now I have got it in a straight stitch and it is um, set at 2.5 this way and two this way. This is width, this is length. Okay, and I'm going to manually put my needle down. I wanna make sure that my machine and my needle can handle the thickness that I'm talking about right here. I'm gonna leave this pin back here in and I'm gonna take a couple of stitches. Oh, we're going zigzag for some reason. Okay, let's try that again. There we go. Okay, it seems to be handling it, so I'll remove this pin. And now I'm just going to put my finger back here, behind my presser foot. And the fabric will sort of keep from being stretched too much. Now I could use a walking foot but by the time I got my walking foot on and this hemmed and the walking foot off, I, I just feel like it's a, not a real good use of my time today. I can just, I'm, I don't know, I just, I'm not thrilled with using a walking foot for this type of stitching. And I'm just kind of making sure that everything is still good, which it is. Okay, 
check in my stitches. Maybe I don't need to do that that hard. Yeah, we're doing all right. And I'm looking at this. I'm kind of keeping an eye on my distance over here. Hang on a minute. I don't know who this is. Okay, guys. So back to this. Let me see if I can get some more light on over there. And we're just going to see if we can get this finished. I don't want to sew over a pen. It can be very dangerous and very hard on your sewing machine. Cut these threads. Taylor's chalk is proving to be really difficult to get out because it's supposed to be one of the easiest things to remove. All right, so I'm going to give Jessica a call, let her know her pants are ready. This is my husband's favorite shirt. And you'll be able to see in just a second, he's worn these sleeves just to death. So here's one. I had to repair it today, again. Um, the first repair was this piece of twill. And today I took a piece of the corduroy and I stitched it to the inside where it had torn away from the twill patch. The other arm seems to be doing just fine. The twill patch is holding but they were both, uh, both elbows were just gone out of this shirt. Now, the collar is a whole horrible other story. So, I started working on the corduroy pants, and I thought to myself, hey, you know what, this corduroy is really soft, right? So if I took this piece of corduroy that I cut off of the hem, like so, and I tape it down, and then stitch it along the top and the bottom edge, it's very soft corduroy. I think I might have a, a winner on an idea. Let us see. Yes, that's much better. So now that we've got the button placed where it needed to be placed, and these two buttons are done, and this collar has been, the damage to the collar has been hidden. I mean, there's clearly more damage, like right here. You can see there's some, some of that wearing of this fine steam of cotton. This shirt's lasted him a really long time. And we'll just see how long we can keep it going. And the best thing about it to me is it's something that he likes. I mean, do I dare say he loves it? And it's not in a landfill. It's being worn. So that's great. Okay, guys. So we did these pants and we did this shirt. And I have, um, outside of tailoring jobs, I have some sewing that I'm going to have coming up 
real soon. <sighs> Have you ever seen this before? Did your grandma work on this or do you do it? Um, it is that wonderful plastic mesh. A lot of people used to make like little ornaments, those little houses, like you'd stitch them together and do embroidery and all kinds of fun stuff. My grandmothers both loved them and they would sew up things for the church bazaar. And I found out the other day that my oldest daughter still has a little mailbox that my grandmother gave me that I think she actually gave one to me, one to my husband, and one to each of our daughters. And we put them on the Christmas tree and it was just a little mailbox that actually worked and we would tuck money in them and put that on the Christmas tree. Um, and my oldest daughter still has hers and uh, that just made me feel so good. But anyway, this project that I'm going to do requires a piece of it, so I have that. And I have this fabric right here. I love it. This will be getting a dye treatment to match these other pieces of fabric. It's just a little bit on the bright white side, and I kind of want to just bring that down a little to have it match with some of these other coffee and tea tones. But it kind of, to me, it just looked like it went with these. Okay, and then I have my, what is it, Fusen Bond or Fusen Shape. So I have a package of Fusen Shape that is 15 inches by 36 inches or 31.1 centimeters by 91.4 centimeters. And it's right there. And what else do I have? Oh, I think I have some D-rings right there. These are three quarter inch D-rings. There are four in this pack of D-rings by Dritz that I purchased. And this is the pattern right here. And I am going to start off by making view D, the little wallet, right there. So that is going to be what I start off sewing after I've done these. Now that they're done, I'm all set, ready to go. Okay, guys, if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed, we would love to have you. So hit the subscribe, and then if you hit the little bell, it will let you know when I have a new video. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.